it's just giving as many people the chance to race um, at university level um, and just you know keep enjoying the sport we realize a lot of competitive swimmers come to university they don't want to take swimming as seriously anymore they want to enjoy it a lot more and we want to provide a league that will do that for them but also still cater for those swimmers who do want to swim at a very high performance end we just want a league that kind of works for everyone and i think we're certainly on the right track to building that welcome to the propulsion swimming podcast where we aim to give swimming the coverage and publicity it deserves every week we celebrate the sport we love with amazing special guests and topics from around the swimming pool and now here are your hosts scott and dan Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. I'm your host Scott and back with me yet again is my good friend and co-host Dan. And on this week's show we are talking about one of the newest and most exciting swimming competitions in the UK. Yeah, this is a concept that we've wanted to get behind since it first started last year and something that we can't wait to be a part of this season. Those of you that are listening who are off to uni or who are already at uni and want to be involved or stay involved in competitive swimming, this is the episode that you need to be listening to. Yes, definitely. Um, I'm one of those swimmers who really wishes this was about when I was at university, even if that was a very long time ago now. Um, (laughs) So welcome to this podcast episode. The founders of the British University Swimming League, or BUSL, Ewan Taylor and Jack Corsten. Guys, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Guys, thank you so much for coming on to this week's episode. Essentially, we're going to try and learn a little bit more about the competition that you both founded. And hopefully, is going to involve, what, 50 plus universities over the next 12 months competing around the country. That's amazing. So yeah, that's right. We've got over 50 teams signed up um, to compete in our sort of free phase um, competition throughout the year. Um, we should get over a thousand swimmers taking part. Um, it should be a great spectacle for university swimming. Mm. So Ewan, when did you first start BUSL and kind of why did you guys start it? So uh, Jack started um, what was originally the National University Development League. Um, it was between three universities. Um, it was the University of Sheffield, Sheffield Hallam and uh, University of Nottingham. Um, I mean, Jack might want to explain a little bit more about that later. Um, but in 2020, um, after I'd sort of, I wanted to go to America for university, I wanted to go be part of the NCAAs, um, and unfortunately I couldn't because uh, of COVID. Um, so in 2021, it came around, and uh, I, I sort of looked at the structure in America and looked at the structure in the UK, and I was, was, was a bit meh. Um, so I emailed Jack and asked, why don't you expand um, the NUDL further out in terms of British rather than just Northern. Um, he had They had done a, a virtual version of the NUDL, um, but I wanted to sort of try to rebrand, restructure, um, have a mix of what they had and what the American version was. Um, so I emailed, emailed Jack, said, got an idea, um, we sat on a Zoom call, spoke through the idea, sort of brought the idea back, sort of met somewhere in the middle um, and uh, yeah, came to an agreement. We rebranded, we spoke to a lot of universities while we were sort of coming up with the idea, sort of like market research kind of style um, and came came to a final conclusion of the, the three-phase structure that we sit with today. Nice. So was this idea something that you guys have always wanted to do, being swimmers yourselves? You saw sort of a gap in the market. Was that always the dream to do that from the beginning? Uh, so, so when I first founded it, I had no idea it would sort of get this big. Um, it was founded by myself as, as a swimming captain up, up at Sheffield um, with Sean Jones, um, my fellow swim captain, um, and then um, the president of not um, yeah president of Nottingham, um, Alec, and the president of Sheffield Hallam, um, Joe May. Uh, we founded it just for eleven universities, just to kind of supplement the competitive calendar to give up, just to give our unis, you know, some more chances to race. Um, but yeah, I had no idea it would get this big and to give so many unis a chance to race. So guys, for those who aren't aware of BUSL or haven't seen it, haven't heard of it, what's the difference between this competition and Bucks, which is essentially right now the leading main university competition in the UK? 
the, the, the main difference is the style. Um, Bucks is uh, two open meets, one short course, one long course, um, and then finishes off with team champs, which is similar to a arena league, you might say, or um, inter counties. Um, whereas they get they get more exclusive each time. Um, bustle is for everyone. We encourage teams to have to rotate swimmers, to have as many people involved as possible, to swim uh, non-point scoring teams as well. Um, so we, we, we just try to encourage as much participation as possible. Um, so the BOSL structure has three dual meets um, in phase one, a conference championship in phase two, and then phase three is the national final. Um, and all teams are placed into conferences of four, um, so they'll swim against each each university individually in phase one in the dual meets, and then all four teams will compete against each other at the same time in phase two, and then the best universities will go through to the national final, um, and we're looking at the possibilities of having an A and a B final as well. Mm. So Jack, how important was it for you guys that essentially this was open to all and accessible to all because i know the cost isn't high to enter and like you and said you do encourage non-point scoring teams as well yeah absolutely so as sort of swimmers ourselves we saw the, the problems in kind of access to competitive swimming um it's a very expensive thing to be involved in um so we wanted to make it as financially inclusive for all clubs as possible making sure that teams that are hosting our events are only doing so to host the event they're not doing it to make money so we're encouraging teams to be very transparent in when they set entry fees to try and use pool time that they've already got in sort of training sessions to make it as cheap as possible for other teams to compete. Um, we put our teams, we group them locally. Um, so to reduce transport costs, teams don't have to travel that far. A lot of universities, there's, there's two in one city. So it's simply just a walk mm -hmm. across the city for some teams. Um, and that just helps keep the cost mm -hmm. down and makes it not such a commitment that, you know, this can just be a simple Wednesday afternoon couple of hours rather than a you know a weekend massive commitment massive financial commitment and we sort of know all the problems that students face because we are all students ourselves so we see those problems and we kind of work that into the league to make it as accessible for everyone so as well as the financial side are students easily able to fit it around their studies as well so so absolutely yeah that's one of the the benefits to our kind of format is it's, it's very quick so our, our rounds are similar to arena league can be over in a couple of hours it's not your sort of standard okay. swimming meet sort of whole weekend sort of thing. It can be a Wednesday afternoon, like so many other teams sports are at university. And that's kind of the things we wanted to kind of encompass with the league. We were kind of quite jealous of other sports teams, you know, having all these regular fixtures on Wednesday afternoons, but there being nothing for swimmers. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to be able to provide something to kind of fill that gap. So if I'm at my university or if I was back at university, how would I get involved with this? And I know you guys have said it is low cost, but how much would it cost me to race for one evening, let's say? So uh, we ask universities to enter um, in July, August time. So we've now closed entries um, and had the, the 55 unis enter. Um, uh, but for an individual swimmer like yourself, um, you, you would pay nothing unless your university asked you to contribute. Um, but it would come down to about a pound, maybe for the whole whole thing. Okay. Um, so it's a we charge a twenty pound entry fee, uh, what we did this year, um, to cover the cost of um, running the league, uh, to go towards uh, prizes and the national final. Uh, so it's all going back to benefiting students. Um, and mm. the only things you have to pay are transport and pool hire. Um, that's it. And for example, most unis last year decided not to charge the other team pool hire because uh, they used their training time. And a lot of universities were supportive in terms of not, not charging the transport fees. Um, so students didn't actually have to pay anything extra. They just had to turn up and have a good time, really. I mean, that sounds great. <laughs> it sounds, I'm sold already. If only I was like, <laughs> I, I didn't even go to uni, but I wish I did go to uni for this. Um, if you're, let, let's say you want to include everyone, um, what is the meet like? So if you go through the door, is it long course? Is it short course? What sort of events is it? Is it more sprint based? Or is it, does it go across the whole spectrum of events? What, what, what would someone expect? 
So our, our sort of program events does change slightly for every every single phase of the league, which is kind of one of the kind of unique points of it. It's not the same every single match. Sim is turning up doing exactly the same thing. Um, mm-hmm. So for our dual meets, you'll go into a into a pool. There will be two lanes. If you have Team A versus Team B, it will be a short course, so twenty five meter pool, and the races will be um, a freestyle and medley men's and females relay, fifties um, of all strokes hundreds of all strokes and then 100 IM. At phase two, we expand this to sort of encompass skins events just to really kind of up the ante a little bit and get the the pressure going and, you know, a bit of atmosphere. And we also include um, mixed relays and then cannon relays as well. And you've also got more teams at that phase two level as well. Yeah, so all of our dual meets are sort of one team versus the other team. And teams are grouped in sort of local conferences of four teams. So they'll They'll essentially play each team in sort of a round robin set of three fixtures in phase one. At phase two, that's then all the teams could converge for one big, like arena league style gala. Um, but we also encourage teams to, if there are spare lanes, to use them um, to get people swimming. So not necessarily taking yeah. part in the league directly, but swimming alongside the league and sort of on a time only basis. But we find a lot of people were quite skeptical about that at the start, people thinking it sort of wouldn't matter you know there'd be no sort of benefit to doing it but we had a loads of teams entering sort of swimming these non-point scoring teams just to give people a chance to swim and we had really positive feedback about it um so essentially a dual meet of one team versus another team there could be eight lanes racing at one time um which which is really good and gets so many people involved yeah exactly it gives so many people an opportunity because I mean, when I was at the university environment, I went to the swim team for the the social aspect more than the training, if I'm honest. And it was just to meet new people while I'm at university. So if you add the benefit of getting to a race here and there, you probably... Do you know what? When I was at university, I'll be totally honest, I didn't care for the training whatsoever. I just wanted to have a bit of fun. So if my training for that week was to race a few 50s in the evening, great. I would have loved that. I'm not sure you're supposed to... like put your hands up and say, sorry, and say that <laughs> <laughs> just went for the social for the drink like, not for the training whoa yeah. I, I feel like say the we could also, <laughs> I, say, I feel like we should also add there were some stories of teams sort of meeting up after the the race that had taken place for sort of social events as well and um, which is really yeah, great I, so mm-hmm. teams all going out in one city um which is just sort of the kind of fun friendly nature of the league i think allows that to happen and that's really good to sort of see on social media yeah. when we look back after Do you think our, there's already, because I know it's only, what, a year old? Would you say there's already a community formed around the league? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. The BOSL seems to be very popular with uh, with universities. Um, we've noticed on sort of the why you should join swimming Instagram posts that teams have been putting on since uh, results day. Um, BOSL is one of the main things they advertise. Um, and also on, nice. here, like, what's here's the committee um when they put like favorite swimming moments um some some of them are bucks obviously and then but a lot of them are the bsl moments um purely because it's it's at home and you don't have to travel or it's not far away and you can get everyone down um so i mean at my university i mean we made big things of the dual matches and the conference championship we had everyone came down to the pool everyone was on poolside cheering and then we made a big social afterwards it was it was it was really great um, and also in Birmingham for the national final, mm. Birmingham did a great job of organising a social there as well. Um, so you had maybe five or six universities were able to stay afterwards and get hotels. And uh, everyone out, everyone went to the Birmingham Student Union and uh, had another great time there as well, yeah. So when it comes to the final, is it always going to be in Birmingham or does it chop and change wherever you can find a pool, basically? So, yeah, we're currently searching for a pool for our national final. Um, We aim to kind of keep it as sort of central as possible because we had some teams flying down from Scotland last year, some teams coming up from the south, so sort of Exeter, Southampton, to kind of make it as fair as possible, sort of that band around the north. Um, But we're working with some of our partners at AP Race. Um, They're helping us sort of with the hunt for to find a suitable pool for next year. Um, But nothing quite decided yet about the final. And you say about that partnership, what will that do to kind of change the league? How does that help you guys as students? AP Race have been uh, very supportive um, in their offering so far. Um, They're they're not looking to sort of 
take take profit so much from it that they're more looking to benefit British swimming. Uh, and university swimming is something that is a is a profitable area, but it's somewhere that needs needs support. Um, so what they've done is they've they've come in, they've said we'll help you guys out. Um, they're they're offering to offer some prizes occasionally, um, but most importantly, they're helping to fund the national final, make it a more ex- more exciting experience. Um, the national final was a, a really enjoyable day yesterday, but being the two people we are, we also saw flaws in it and we wanted to improve those. Uh, and AP Race are massively supportive on trying to make an amazing experience for everyone that comes along that day, um, or even two days if we manage to make it two days, yeah. yeah. Well, last year was a massive success, clearly, with so many unis taking part in an amazing final in Birmingham. What other changes have you made this year to make it better? I mean, you've said about AP Race being your partner now, but what other things have you added to make it even better? Um, so a lot of the changes have sort of been behind the scenes um, to just make sure it's a easier process for teams. Last year, it was all very new. Um, we just tried to sort of streamline, if you'll pardon the pun, the process um, for teams to kind of run the league. Um, because it's we're all students, we haven't done anything sort of as big as this before. There were there were issues last year where, you know, teams weren't communicating properly and we're just making sure that's all sorted out. Um, we've just made sure all of our program events are easily accessible the biggest changes there aren't really any this year except for the fact that we want to make the final um, a lot better um, we think we've got more teams we're just expecting this year to hopefully go a lot more smoothly for teams to enjoy it a little bit more mm. he, he says he says not a lot of changes but we, we've had quite a few sort of admin changes we've increased the size of the committee um, we've Jack Jack loves a spreadsheet um, will will send me photos of spreadsheets because he just <laughs> adores them. Do love a spreadsheet, um, and he's uh, <laughs> he's updated our I spreadsheets really to make them easier to use. <laughs> um, and uh, we've <laughs> increased the amount of contacts we have from universities um, because students are some of the most difficult people to get in contact with. Um, so we we won't have people just ignoring us. Um, uh, yeah, and just trying to make it a lot easier run, a lot more accessible in terms of understanding where information is coming from, where it needs to go to, and uh, more committee members will hopefully smooth out the smooth out the running. Definitely, mm. I know me and Dan could use with like three pairs of us at sometimes just to keep everything on track. So I know how you guys feel. Um, only, what's the yeah. what's the future aims of BUSL? What are you guys looking to build here? Like in long term, down the road, five years, what would you love to see this league be? So yeah, in, in five years' time, we we just want a league that is still running, um, is bigger and better than ever before, and it's just giving as many people the chance to race um, at university level, um, and just you know keep enjoying the sport. We realise a lot of competitive swimmers come to university, they don't want to take swimming as seriously anymore. They want to enjoy it a lot more. And we want to provide a league that will do that for them, but also still cater for those swimmers who do want to swim at a very high performance end. We just want a league that kind of works for everyone. And I think we're certainly on the right track to building that. Um, and yeah, lots of little improvements. I think we'll, we'll get us there. So one of the other really think, really great things about this league is we don't have to have a set plan um, or idea about where we're going to be in five years. We have loads of options. Um, we could follow the, the route of other sports that are in bucks like water polo, hockey, football, where they have uh, tiers and divisions and promotion and relegation. We could go towards that or we can continue the road we're on um, and just continue expansion, maybe consider allowing A and B teams. Um, but we have, it, it's great because we have so many options. We're not confined to just following one path. We can sort of continue to yeah. talk to the people that are involved and just get the general consensus and uh, continue along that path and, do what's best for the league and the most enjoyable for the swimmers. Yeah, I think it's great that yeah, you're yeah. enhancing essentially the um, the university swimming environment. Essentially, it's it's changing for the better with you guys putting this competition on. I think it's a massively underappreciated kind of part of swimming in the UK because there is a huge amount of swimmers who come out of the sport, out of clubs at 18 and go to universities and then get lost in the sport. So I think you're very much giving them an avenue to stay involved and keep on enjoying swimming. I just love the idea of the potential that you guys obviously have in your mind and the league as such. I'm, just, I'm wondering what will happen if you guys stop 
being students, obviously that was inevitable. What will happen then to the league? Who looks after it? So we, we've got a few years. I've certainly got two years left in me as a student yet um, for all my sins. Mm. Um, essentially, it's just not just the two of us. There's a whole committee behind us as well. And um, we held elections um, sort of in July at our AGM to elect a committee. And I think there's about 14 people sort of running the league behind us. Okay. And the idea is that this will just be a, hopefully a league that's passed on to the next generation of students. And like you and said, it, it okay. needs to be able to adapt to whatever the, you know, the, the university swimmers of that era, like that year, that year want. Mm. Um, and I hope it can just be passed down and passed down to people who are passionate about swimming and passionate about keeping the league going. Um, in that way, uh, well, I think we'll we'll get a taste of that this year a little bit, to be honest. Um, so Jack Jack does Jack does medicine, and uh, he's often on uh, placement rotations at hospitals, uh, and I'm on placement mm. myself in in my year in industry this year. So we'll both be working this year and less involved with student life, but still sort of all kind of be there. So we'll get a taste for it this year, and we'll find out how it goes. Nice, nice. Um, guys, it's been great talking to you. I'm going to summarize this podcast by asking you four quick fire questions just so to, to almost sum up this podcast really well and drum home the messages of BUSL. Okay, Jack, how can university swimmers get involved if their university have signed up? So if their university has signed up, they just need to join their university club and ask their committee at the club um, what their plans are for the BUSL how they can get picked for the team, what fixtures they've got. They can check out our website, which will show their fi- their fixtures. Um, if they have any questions, get in contact with the league. Follow us on social media. Um, everything's posted there. Cool. Ewan, what is the cost of entering this league for a university swimmer? For a university swimmer, it should be hopefully zero, um, although it's best to check with your captains. Um, but yeah, it should be zero or very close to it. Cool. What are the confirmed dates for the first few rounds of competition? So our phase one um, fixtures, which are split into three matches. Match one takes place from the 7th of October to the 20th of October. Match two from the 28th of October to the 10th of November. Um, match three from the 23rd of November to the 11th of December. And then we have our phase two conference championships happening around the end of January. And finally, guys, where can people learn more about this league? You can learn more on Instagram, at BU Swim League, on Twitter, it should be the same on Facebook, it should be the same, or on our website, www.busimleague.co.uk. And I will add from us at Propulsion Swimming, we're going to be putting up a video on our YouTube channel explaining a little bit more about the league in a very simple format so everyone can understand, especially if you're taking part this year. Um, and over the course of this year, we will be rounding up all of the results from the league as well, giving it the full coverage it deserves. Guys, thank you so much for coming on to this week's episode of the Propulsion Swim Podcast. It's been great talking to you and best of luck with not only the Swim League this year, but also your studies because student comes first. Um, and yeah, best of luck. It's been great talking to you. Thank you very much for having us. Thanks for having us. It's been great. Yeah, we're super, super excited to see where it's going to lead you guys. And honestly, we see the potential. That's why we want to get involved and we will do everything in our power to to spread the word because it's a great concept that you've got going for you guys. So, yeah, good luck to you both. And uh, we will catch up again soon. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you much. Scott. So that just about rounds up this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so on YouTube, Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And myself and Dan will be back next week. Yeah, thank you for listening, everyone, and we'll catch you on the next one. You've been listening to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast with Scott and Dan. We want to thank you for joining us and invite you to subscribe to the show as well as checking out the Propulsion Swimming YouTube channel for weekly tutorials and videos to get your swimming fix. We will be back next week. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one.